Hi, this is Tim with Eduware, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you a detailed overview on the redesigned exam and question editing suite. To get started, I'm going to open a previously created exam by clicking on View Edit Exam. Alright, I'm going to open this exam here labeled Quiz 1. Click on Modify, Edit to open it. Alright, here we have the brand new exam and question editing suite. The first thing that you'll notice is we have these tabs at the top. This allows us to quickly navigate through the different functions we have. Under the My Test tab, we can see an overview of the current test that you're working on. You have a navigation tree on the left and the current content of your exam in the center. On the Browse tab, you can quickly browse through our question catalog. In the Search tab, you can search using the wizard ID, a word, or phrase, and in the Write Question tab, you can compose or edit your own question with our robust question editing suite. Let's take one step back here. We have two more buttons to look over. We have the Print button, which allows you to print your exam when you're all done, and the Save button, which allows you to save your exam. Now, let's do a detailed overview of each one of the tabs that we see here. First, the My Test tab. Let's go there now. The My Test tab allows you to view the exam that you're currently working on. You'll see first on the left-hand side that we have our Navigator, which gives us an overview of our sections and the question content. We can click on any one of these sections or questions to quickly jump to that question. This Navigator will follow you as you move around the page, so there's always an easy way to get to where you're going in your current exam. In addition to navigating through your questions, you may also reorder them by clicking and dragging them around your exam. This quickly allows you to arrange your exam and the content in whatever way that you like. You can also do this with sections. To add a new section, click New, and then click New Section. I'll give a name for my section, and also write a quick set of instructions for this section. When you're all done, you can hit Cancel to void your changes, or hit Save to add your section to the exam. Now, you'll see that the section actually shows up at the very bottom of my exam. If we click on it, we'll see that there is nothing happening under the section. You'll also notice that this purple bar appears, which allows you to edit the section or remove the section. Now, I'd like to add content to my section. To do so, I can click and drag and put my section where I'd like it to be, and all the questions currently below that section will appear. Or, if I move it back, I can click and drag individual questions and put them below my section. This will also add them to the section. Now if I scroll down, I can see that these questions have been added to the section. Next, I'd like to talk about the Remove button. The Remove button allows you to remove anything that's currently selected in your navigation tree on the left. So, if I select a few questions or a few sections and then hit Remove, they're gone instantly. Next, I'd like to talk about points. If I click Points, I'll get an overview of the current point assignment that's been given to my exam. To change this, I can click on any of the numbers, either under Total Points, or main section, or even individual questions, and give them different assignments. As I do that, all numbers will change dynamically throughout the rest of my exam. If I click on a question, I'll get this purple bar that shows up below, similar to when I had clicked on a section. Now, if we take a look at this purple bar, there are several options that appear. We may take the question and remove it, and then if we'd like, we can add it right back to our exam simply by clicking the Add button. There's also an Edit button, which allows us to edit the question simply by clicking on it. This will take you to the Edit Question Suite, which we'll go over in great detail later on. For now, I'm going to hit Cancel so that we can go back to the exam view. Alright, moving forward with our purple bar, uh, the next option that we have is Info. Info gives us some detailed information on this question. The ID number, subject, classification, thinking skills, difficulty, and question origin. This can be very handy. Last, we have Feedback. If I click on Feedback, I'll be given a dialog that allows me to leave feedback on the current question that I'm working with. Simply hit Send to submit. I'll hit Cancel for now. Now, we've gone through the My Test tab. Now let's take a look over the Browse tab. 
the Browse tab allows you to quickly and simply navigate through Edgeware's question database. You can filter and then navigate from these larger categories down to more advanced categories. For instance, click on a broad category like Introduction to Living Environment. I can then narrow down my selection and see the questions that appear underneath that category. You'll notice that when I select a question, the same purple bar that showed up in the My Test view shows up in this view as well. If I'd like to add this, I simply click Add, and to remove it, click Remove. Edit, Info, and Feedback work in the exact same way as previously shown. You can also filter these questions very easily by selecting the Filter button. You may choose between All, Multiple Choice, and Free Response. Next, we're going to take a look over the Search tab. The Search tab allows you to quickly and easily search using Wizard ID, Word, or Phrase. Now, the Wizard ID is the question number that appears in our printed question catalogs. I'm going to search a Wizard ID now, show you how easy it is. Ah, there we have the question I was looking for. You can add this question to your exam by clicking Add, and you also have the other buttons, Edit, Info, and Feedback, that we saw in the other two views. And I can also filter out question types here between multiple choice and free response. In addition to searching with wizard IDs, I can search single words. There we go, several results containing the entry Darwin. Or, in addition to single words, I could search a phrase as well. There's one more search trick that I'd like to show you. You can search multiple wizard ID numbers. They must be separated by commas. Here I'm going to search three different ID numbers back to back. And there we have it. All three of those ID numbers shown below. Ready to be edited or added to my exam as I see them. Now, let's take a look over the Write Question tab. This is our question editor. Here we have our question editor. This is a fully featured suite that allows you to edit questions and change any property you'd like to. You have Save and Back, which allows you to save and return to your exam, and you have Save, which allows you to save immediately and continue editing your question. We have several properties to choose from. First, our subject property, allowing you to choose the subject that you're currently aligned to, the type, multiple choice or free response. Group question, allowing you to group questions into multiple sets. We also have full column, allowing you to fully fill a column with your question. This is useful for essay questions. We can allow partial points. This allows you to designate, simply by clicking on these numbers that appear, individual point percentages for your question. This allows you to assign partial credit. Allow Choice Shuffling allows you to shuffle the answer choices at print time. And Survey Question lets you write a question without a designated answer. Next we have Basic Classifications. We also allow Standards Classifications. You can align your standards with Eduware, your current state based off registration, or the Common Core Standards. It's so easy to pick my standards. Simply choose your standards from your standards tree, and then hit OK. Next, I'm going to step back into my exam by clicking on Cancel, where I can select a question in my exam to edit. This takes me back to the same editor, but this time you'll see that the question content is now filled in for me, all ready to be edited. If we look along the top here, you'll see that there are several standard options that allow you to use rich text editing when you're composing or editing your question content. In addition to that, we've also included several extended features such as inserting images and inserting equations. Editing questions are easy. Simply click on the text area that you'd like to edit and type whatever you'd like. The same goes for composing or changing your answers. Simply click in the field and type what you'd like. To choose a correct answer, simply click the bubble next to the corresponding question number that is your correct answer. It's easy to add extra answer choices by simply clicking that plus sign and it's just as easy to remove them by clicking the minus sign. When you're all done editing your question, you can go to the top and hit save to save your question immediately. Now that I've shown you how to create a question, and I've also shown you how to edit a question, I'd like to show you how to group questions together. To do so, I'm going to select one of the questions below and create a group question out of it. 
To get started, simply click Edit to create a group question out of this. This takes you to our question editor. From here, along the properties side, I can select group question, yes. You'll see now that this description area pops up on the right. Base your answers to questions blank through blank on blank. You're going to want to finish the rest of that sentence down here below. I'm going to do that right now. Once you've set up your first group question, all you need to do at this point is save and return back to your exam. I'm going to select overwrite this question and then save. Now, let's go back down through the list and take a look at this question. You'll see a new option has shown up, the group question option. I'm going to click that group question option now and see what it says. It offers me two choices, browse all questions in the group, which there are currently none, or create question for group. That's what I want to do, so I'm going to hit that. That takes us to our question editor, where I can create a new question to add to this group. I'm going to write that question now and skip ahead when I'm done. Okay, I've got my question created here, and now I'm all ready to save this question. I'm going to hit save and back, make sure I select add to assessment, and hit save. Now, let's scroll down to where that group question was. Ah, this looks great. Everything looks great here. So that's how you work with group questions. Now that I've given you an overview of creating and managing your content on your exam, it's time to show you how to print and save. When you're all ready to print, simply click on the print button over here. This will take you to our print settings suite. For more information on the settings for the suite, please see our other help video on print settings. Now, if you notice something's wrong and you'd like to make a quick change, simply click edit at the top here, and this will take you right back to our exam and question editing suite. If you look in the upper right, you'll notice that the save button is currently lit up blue. This lets us know that we have not manually saved while working on our exam. There is an autosave function built into the background to automatically save, but if you'd like to save yourself or change any of the basic settings, you can click the save button and hit overwrite to save your exam. You'll see that it's no longer lit up blue. You can also use the save button to save a duplicate or save as. This allows you to give a new name to your quiz and hit save as to make a duplicate. This has been an overview of our brand new exam and question editing suite. As always, if you have any questions, simply click on the live help button that appears in the upper right hand corner of every page.